Welcome to example program. In this video, we will see how we can display this right angle triangle pattern in Python programming language. Here we will be using the nested for loops. In Python, you can write this program in different ways. Uh, one way is you can use only one for loop and then you can use the multiplication operator and you can display this pattern. Here we will be using two for loops and we will nest them and we will display this pattern. Here instead of the starts, we can display the numbers and we can display the numbers in different orders and we will see all those things in this video. Okay, now let's take a look at this pattern. Here we have the stars in this right angle triangle shape. If I divide this pattern in terms of rows and columns, then uh, it will be the first row, second row, third row and fourth row. And similarly, if you look at the columns, then one, two, three and four. So here we have four rows and four columns. Now, if you look at the number of stars present in a particular row, then uh, in the first row, we have one star or we have the character printed in one column. In the second row, we have two star or the uh, character is printed in two columns. In the third row, we have the character printed in three columns. And in the fourth row, we can see that the character is printed in the four columns. Now, if you look at this, then the number of star or number of character printed in a particular row is equal to row number. So if you look at the first row, row number is one and the number of star printed is one. If you look at the third row, row number is three and the number of character printed are three. Similarly, if we extend this pattern, let's say in the sixth row, then the number of stars or the number of columns which will contain this uh, character are six. So here we will be using this logic of number of stars present in a row is equal to row number. We will use it and we will construct our program. So now let us see how we can write the program. So here, uh, what we're going to do is we can ask the user to enter the number of rows for which he wants us to display the pattern. So I'm going to use the input function in here and I'm going to specify the prompt as enter the number of rows and this input function will return the user input in string form. So what we do is we will convert the user input in string form to integer form by using this int function and then we will store that value in a variable. So I'm going to say row number is equal to user input in integer form. OK, now we know for how many rows we have to display this pattern. Let's start displaying the pattern. So here what we do is we will display the pattern row by row. First, we display the number of characters that we have to display in the first row and then we go to the second row and there also we will display the number of characters that we have to display. Then we go to the third row. We will display the number of columns that we have to display and similarly we will continue. So we will use a for loop in here and uh, I'm going to take the loop counter variable as rows. Uh, it will allow us to go to each row and uh, we will take it in a range of values and this range will start from one and the end value of this range is row number plus one here. I have included plus one. That's because with this range function, the starting value, uh, which we have specified as one here is inclusive and the end value is exclusive. If you want the numbers uh, from one to nine, then you have to specify the range as one to 10 because the end value 10 is not inclusive. It will be, it will not be included. Okay. Now here, if I use the print function and if I print the row number in here, if I print the row value here, we will make it as row, not rows because it will point to one single row. And uh, if I run this program now, enter the number of rows, I'm going to say six. Then you guys can see it will provide us six rows, one, two, three, four, five, six. And the next thing that we have to do is we have to display whatever the columns that we have to display for each row. Okay. Now here 
we will be using another for loop and that is for printing the columns for each row. So here I'm going to use a for loop and here I'm going to say column and it will be in a range. So range and here we know how many columns that we have to display for a particular row. That is the number of columns that we have to print in a particular row is equal to row number. So here we will have this range from one starting from one and the end value will be row plus one. So this row variable will get the uh, row value where we are working and here I'm doing this plus one. That's because the range functions end value is not not inclusive. So uh, if you look at this, uh, if you are printing for the third row, then this range function will be range of one comma three plus one, which will be four range of one comma four. And it will provide us three columns because four is not inclusive one two three, And we will display that many characters here for that particular row. So here I'm going to use the print function. And I'm going to specify the character that I want to display, which is star. And we will specify the end value as a space. That is, after printing this star, I want to end this uh, print statement with a space so that, you know, our, our pattern can look nice. Okay. Now, after that, after printing the characters or the after printing the columns for a particular row, we have to go to the next line to print the next row. So here I'm going to come out of this inner for loop and then I'm going to add a new line. I'm going to use the print statement in here. Okay. Now we have written the program. Let's save this and let's run this Enter the number of rows. I'm going to say six. Now you guys can see we have this right angle triangle pattern for six rows. Now here we can make a lot of modifications uh, instead of this star. If you want to display any character, then you can uh, change that one in here. And before that, what happens if we don't use this uh, print statement? I'm going to comment it out. I'm going to save this program and I'm going to run this and enter the number of rows. I'm going to say five. Now you guys can see after printing the uh, columns for a particular row, we are not going to the next line to print the next row. And that's why all these stars are displayed in just one line. Okay. So this print statement is necessary for this program to work. Now here, um, you know, you can change the character as I said before, and if you want, you can display the row number or the column number. For example, I'm going to change this one to row here. And if I save this program and run it, enter the number of rows, um, I'm going to enter five. Now you guys can see it is displaying the row number instead of the star. So we get this pattern and similarly, we can change this one to print column number. And if I run this program and enter the number of rows as five, now you guys can see it is displaying the column number in this pattern. So one, one, two, one, two, three, like that. Now you can make a lot of modifications. For example, if you want to display the row number and the column number together, then you can do that. For that, I'm going to modify this string. I'm going to use a couple of placeholders in here. One, and we can use the format function and, and we can provide the value for these placeholders. For example, I'm going to say, row comma column and if I save this program and run this code and this time if I enter let's say five then you guys can see we have this pattern um, displayed and similarly if you want you can swap out this row and column values that is you can display that is you can display the column value first then you can display the row value or you know you can modify this program in whatever way that you want and you can display different different patterns. So this is it guys for this video. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, hit the like button. If you don't like it, hit the dislike button. If you want to say something, then write that in the comment box. For more tutorials like this, do subscribe to the channel. Thank you for watching. I'll see you later in the next video.